Hey everyone, my name is Tammy Davis. Thank you for joining me today. Um, this particular video is basically um, a rant. <laughs> That's how I'm going to put it. It's a rant. I won't say a temper tantrum per se, but it's definitely a rant. And I have done my best over the last two and a half years since doing videos of kind of keeping it to myself. And I mean, and, and truthfully, I mean, there's, um, I'm going to actually uh, retract something that I've said in prior videos and qualify the reason for doing that. But I just have had it up to here with direct marketing companies. Um, the bottom line to that is, you know, these companies are all about business building. It's all about making money, you know, and again, it's really good for stay at home moms. I mean, I understand the value that it brings to, um, to many lives, but it, it's an irresponsible foundation for, um, healthcare. It's irresponsible. Um, and I'm not going to sit here and name companies. Um, but I will kind of address, and I've talked about this prior, but this one really is necessary. Um, so first of all, like I said, I'm not going to name any particular companies, but I do have a number of them in mind. And a large part of this is for this, like I said, is because we have people who are signing up to make it, to, to have a business, which everybody's entitled to make money. But if we don't actually understand what the hell we're doing with these products and why we're suggesting people take them, then we need to stop doing it. It's, it's a, it's criminal. It's criminal activity because health is serious. You know, um, people are dependent upon information. Um, they want to get well. And when we have people out here, just pumping people full of supplements because because of the promotional brochures, because of what it says about how it's going to boost energy, help you lose weight, um, help, you know, clear your head, you know, improve your, your focus and your sleep. I mean, you know, you've, you probably have seen it. If you're familiar with any kind of direct marketing company or you know somebody who has been involved or you yourself are involved, you've seen the marketing materials and they sound fantastic. But let me say something. There is no company in the world that is going to promote its business with fact. It's not going to give you something that's going to say, hey, well, this could happen. You know, we have to place that information on pharmaceuticals, but on your nutraceuticals, they don't have to do that. All they want to do is promise you a wealth of health. And um, again, like I said, I don't disqualify or I, I should say I don't begrudge anybody the opportunity to make money. And at the same time, we've got to take responsibility. And so now I've said this a couple of times, I'm actually going to give an example. So I have a new client, um, a new private client that came to me about a week and a half ago. And when um, I started working with her. She is, her story is basically she was diagnosed with um, MS probably close to like 11 years ago, maybe a little bit longer. And she started on medicine, on medications and didn't see an improvement. So therefore she stopped the medications and she proceeded to get involved with, again, taking, she wanted to go the natural way. Well, I don't blame anybody for that. I mean, I don't blame anybody for even taking medications. We just want to feel good. That said, she currently spends over $1,500 a month on supplements. So before I go any further, I don't understand how in the world anybody could feel comfortable charging $1,500 a month. I've seen naturopaths charge this. I have actually worked in naturopathic clinics where this is where the average the average ticket, exit ticket was over $1,000 in supplements. It's bullshit. It's just absolute bullshit. Nobody needs to be spending that kind of money on supplements, especially if you're not getting any results. If you're not seeing any improvement and you're, you know, and you're still struggling and you, none of this stupid muscle testing, you just don't need it. Um, as I said, I have, this is, this is just, this is it. it we, we've got to stop 
treating one another this way. We have to stop looking at people as dollar signs. And so the fact that this woman spends $1,500 a month in supplements is outrageous, especially when I know I have other people coming to me and, you know, and, and I have actually other professionals telling me that I need to be taking health insurance because people can't afford to take care of themselves, that they actually require health insurance in order. And so I should look into ways that I can take health insurance. Well, here's the deal. I have an MPI number, but the truth is I don't charge that much money. I mean, in this, I don't charge that much money when it comes to the big scheme of things. I mean, I can go to a health food store and I can look at people spending a ton of money. If we actually stood there and, and surveyed them on a monthly basis and to see how much money they invest in their in their healthcare products, you know, the, the natural supplements. And then, they, of course, then you've got the other ones and or they could even be doing the direct marketing. But the fact is, is that this information that's out there is crap. And here's why. If something is telling you, okay, so let me back up a minute. So this woman, $1,500 a month, MS, then, then they say, no, it's not really MS. You're living with Lyme disease and um, heavy metal. Um, heavy metal challenges with heavy metals, heavy metal toxic toxicity or something, I think. And both of those truthfully have been um, in, indicated in MS diagnosis. So whether she has MS or not, it's mm, the imaging says no. I just put it that way. But she is now currently confined to a wheelchair. She's been in a wheelchair for seven years. She's unable to move her legs. It's not that her legs are weak. Her, her, she has severe spasticity. The rigidity in her muscle tissue is significant. And then it's even in her hands. She has no use of her hands. So she's confined to a wheelchair. She has, she's 52 years old. She has to rely on other people to bathe her, to feed her, and everything. So she wanted to know if I could help her. Well, I, I told her we could, and we began. Um, she did tell me that she was taking um, a number of supplements. And at that point, I told her, just stick with what you're doing. She didn't tell me everything. Um, she, yeah, she just didn't tell me everything. She doesn't have access to a computer. She's on um, by telephone and she didn't have the information with her that particular day. So we just sent it off. She started with it. And interestingly enough, the rigidity didn't get worse. I mean, it can't possibly get any worse if you can't move it, move your hands and your legs. But the um, pain and the tingling increased. Well, number one, that tells me that something's working, um, that her body is responding to it. Now, we may not like the way it's going. And so at that point, she provided me with a list of supplements because she's working with two companies. And so she provided me a list from the first company. And it's not a, it's not a secret that she actually wants to come off of all of these supplements or a lot of these supplements. She's tired of spending this kind of money, and I can't say that I blame her. Seven years in a wheelchair, seven years of taking natural products before medications and seeing absolutely no improvement in any area. So she, um, like I said, she, she started feeling, and I, as I was talking to her, she provided me a list of um, the supplements or one from one company, and that's seven. So that's seven supplements from one company. And um, yeah, and they do charge an awful lot of money. I've actually priced these things out because I can and get to the, obviously can get to them on the computer. Um, but in the meantime, I told her to back off on using the salves that I provided her because, well, I wanted to see what was going on. And it, to me, it sounded like she was rapidly detoxing because we're increasing um, antioxidant levels primarily glutathione, but there's you know, a number of things occurring in their system and it was happening too rapidly. And because of the extent of um, decline in her health, it was necessary to get her to kind of slow things down because her body was having a hard time eliminating it. This is just the way it seemed to me. I told her also too, with the products that she's taking, more than likely these are being promoted as anti-inflammatory, highly nutritious, you know, that kind of thing, antioxidants, full of antioxidants. And so um, the combination was too much. That said, I sat down and that's what brought me to this video because I sat down and I started digging apart, picking apart these supplements like I would anything. Because when you first look at the label, it looks freaking healthy. It looks great. It's basically concentrated fruit juice because she's mostly drinking juice. 
But then if you start looking at the proprietary blends, okay, and you start picking those apart, um, I mean, first of all, when you have countless ingredients, it makes you kind of wonder what's going on. And then when you've got numbers of products that have what look to be the same ingredients, you got to get to the deeper stuff. Now, there's no question that there's preservatives in this stuff. So that right there disqualifies it from be, even being natural. Um, what's worse is that four of those three, four of the seven products actually contained different types of caffeine and herbal stimulants. And actually, they weren't even herbal stimulants. They were plant constituents that have been identified as a stimulant. Um, her, Hernadine, I think is what how you pronounce the one. And I actually found that because there was, under the proprietary blends, there was even a registered name for under the proprietary. So that means that is a separate formula all on its own. So I went and looked that up and was fortunate enough to find that information. And that was a combination of caffeine and, like I said, these plant constituent um, stimulants. Um, in fact, it happens to be one of hernadine happens to be one that's found in bar, barley grass, and that it's in such trace amounts that if when we eat barley grass, it doesn't really you know affect us at that level. But they only discovered it when they were doing um, when they were studying horses, or you know I guess drawing blood from horses, and they found it in the blood levels of the horses because horses eat a lot of barley. But think about their energy levels, okay? But in barley as a stimulant. There's a synergy, and this is the thing that I, I keep talking about. And so if before I go any further, if you're new, that's Theo, by the way. <laughs> if you're new to watching me, I'm a phytotherapist and aromacologist with a background in pharmacology and aromatherapy, as well as the chemistry, uh, I should say the biochemistry of plants and food. I have talked about it differently before, or mentioned it differently, but that's really what it comes down to, the biochemistry of plants and food. And that's very, very important because plant constituents remain a target of study. Um, and what they're looking at is the mechanism, mechanism of action on the human genome as it relates to drug development and human health. That was a lot. So that's why, well, that's what qualifies me to be even speaking to you along these lines. And so when I look at the, and like I said, there's a synergy within plants. And so you can, if you isolate a component then it's going to have a different an impact on the human body. If it's left to its natural state or in its natural state, there's a synergy amongst the other phytonutrients that helps to level the effects out, actually helps to regulate them in our system. This is part of what they understand when they're forming medications because there's a synergy that they try to replicate. And they're doing the very same thing with nutraceuticals. That's what's happening. So this hernadine combined with caffeine is has a very stimulating effect. Now, you have to stop and wonder if all of these products are promising weight loss, you know, increased energy levels, improved sleep, in, improved cognitive function. I mean, we're talking about brain function, okay? And if you're getting all of this information and you're looking at a stinking bottle that just has fruit juices listed on it, or, you know, other just vitamins and minerals, you please question where the hell is the stimulation coming from? Because vitamins and minerals will not do that. Yes, they do nourish the cells. We are looking for cellular energy to help keep us alive. That's important, but that's not going to boost cognitive function. That's not going to improve sleep levels. That's not going to um, help you lose weight. They're important but there's other hormonal functions that have to occur that vitamins and minerals do not necessarily influence. The digestive process, and that's the other thing that concerns me, is a lot of these products are, can, contain some sort of delivery mechanism that increases the absorption rate. And while that may seem beneficial for many people, when you're including it with essential oils, you are now compounding the problem because essential oils actually do increase or they they assist with the assimilation of nutrients let me put it that way because they are signaling molecules they have the ability to help adapt genetic function so that we get improved we, our nutrition uptake is improved and this is significant 
after 30 plus years, basically my entire adult life of working with plants and, um, and pharmaceuticals in such a way and nutrition, it is astounding to see how beneficial a little bit can do when you actually mindfully integrate them. But at this point, when everything, I mean, when you're, I wish I had these bottles with me, but when you're looking at these bottles and you see so much stuff and then you start to break it down and I'm looking at this and caffeine alone is known to cause muscle spasms. Okay. Just caffeine alone. These products contain green tea, white tea, coffee. And like I said, there was even another one of a registered ingredient called Advant Advantra Z. And that is a registered um, blend of other chemicals, which also includes caffeine. And um, is there any wonder why this woman is rigid? Not to mention the fact that, you know, when you've got oils and you have um, delivery mechanisms and everything's increasing the uptake, her body just went berserk. So I called her back and told her that I wanted her to stop. I said, she didn't have to throw them away. I'm not trying to interfere with anybody else's business, but this is dangerous. This woman cannot move. And for anybody to hand her a product and go, well, here, this is healthy. This is organic. No, it's not. If it has says sodium benzoate on that label, it's not organic. Um, and other preservatives. I mean, that's not organic. When you see a registered um, a registered blend, that's not organic. Because for as much as we like to think that they're harvesting the harnadine from barley grass, what are they going to do with the extra grass, right? It's too. It's not cost effective to extract one plant constituent to put into a, into a nutraceutical. These nutraceutical companies are primarily being run by scientists who have actually already worked in pharmaceutical companies. It's biotechnology just on a more, on, on what supposedly a nutritious level. And while the juices may be good, there's still, you know, um, there's other things added to it. And I think, I think the other thing I, I, I'm flashing to as I'm thinking about this is, um, uh, when I was looking at the promotional material, it, you know, one of the things that they highlight is the fact that our food supply um, is significantly depleted of nutrition. While that may be the case, um, there's still nutrition. And as again, if you if you're not familiar with me, I talk an awful lot about genetic adaptations. I do not believe in defects or dysfunction. This is merely the body, our bodies, regardless of the situation that we're currently in. Even in this woman's case, her body's working for her. It may not look like it, but she's alive and breathing. It's working. It's just reacting to the world around her. She does live in a very heavily um, polluted area, meaning there's a lot of heavy metals in the air because of the type of industry that she's around, as well as the farmland. And there's a lot of other chemicals that are being used on the ground. So there's a lot of toxicity already. And um, so her body is responding to the environment. This is what adaptation means. Adaptation is what actually helps us to survive. And even though we may not be thriving and we don't necessarily like condition that our body is surviving in, it is still surviving. I basically say that we're living in certain chronic survival mode. The plants are doing the same thing. The nutrition, I'm sorry, I was brain fart there. <laughs> Nutrients are depleted. This is one of the big things that they're pushing up with a lot of these supplement companies is that stress depletes nutrition nutrients from the body. Well, okay, that's, that's a fair statement. And it also depletes nutrients from the, um, from plants. Now, the reason it depletes nutrients from the human body is because it's, it's, there's changes that occur during times of stress. And basically, with 45 million chemicals being, in used, being used around the world, the body is chronically stressed. It's, it's, it's stress response is a protection mechanism. So basically, the body has been kicked into high gear, it's on high alert. Therefore, the chemistry is altered, which then impacts the way foods are broken down, which means they're not being broken down the way they used to be. That means the cells have been signaled to produce different chemicals to keep us protected, which means the nutrients that they need to help us thrive are no longer necessary. They need other nutrients. Okay, this is basic. This is a very basic way of describing what happens to the body in chronic survival mode. All right. 
Um, if you hear a dog barking, that's not my dog. That's my neighbor's dog barking. Um, she has a tendency to cry out during the day when um, her mom leaves. So I just, I, you may not even hear it, but I just wanted to make sure that I said something just in the odd chance that you did. So the same thing can be said for plants. Plants are, um, they're in survival mode. I mean, they're having to survive the environment just like we are. So their chemistry is going to be altered. Of course, the nutrition, the nutrient levels are going to be varied. That said, again, it's a great argument for using delivery mechanisms that actually help with the uptake of nutrients. So that, but I'm going to say this much, if that's the argument for food, then the, ju the, the food that they're using for these nutraceuticals are being grown on the same planet, as far as I know. Yes, they may be gro being grown in a um, controlled environment and maybe not necessarily outside, meaning more so indoors, um, but the light is going to be different. And they're all live and they are still breathing the same air that we are. They don't, they're not existing in a vacuum. So there's some variables that would be different that may improve to a degree. But my suspicion is that things are being added to these plants because there's no way that they can compensate for that difference in nutrition just by growing them indoors. Again, light. Um, environment, you know, they may be trying to grow it in the perfect environment. They're still growing in the air. They're not growing in a vacuum. And, you know, maybe you could say they're using filtered air. I don't know the, the conditions under which these plants are being grown. But what I am saying is that the mechanism for delivery makes sense because we want to increase that. But if you're actually using essential oils, you don't need all of that. That's way too much for the system. And when um, we're promoting products that um, enhance all, you know, provide all these, these great benefits, right? Cognitive function, sleep, energy, weight loss. And my client doesn't need weight loss. That's not a problem. Um, she, I mean, her energy levels, I mean, I think are as good as they can be given the fact that she can't move. Um, she does function during the day. She does go places with people in a wheelchair. So it's not like she's bedridden. So um, it doesn't make any sense um, to pump her full of all of these things. And what made it even more of a concern was one of the products actually contained fat blockers in it. Again, more plant constituents that have been identified to block the um, fat, you, uh, the fat, yeah, basically the fat distribution. And I, of course, that's supposed to make, you know, be a really great product for weight loss. I think it's foolish. And I know there's a number of products out there that talk about fat blockers. Let me just say this. Well, regardless of what hormone you're talking about, the hormones run every function in the body. Okay, that's just what hormones do, including movement and muscle development and you know muscle repair and so forth. Because what's what happens when you move, tissue breaks down, it's, it has to kick in and be repaired. So that all involves hormones, as does the immune system. Okay, so the immune system is activated by hormones and we've already talked about Lyme in this person. But Regardless, there's hormones involved, and fat is necessary for hormonal production. It's absolutely necessary. The sterols in the fats are needed, and what gets me is that then on top of all that, they're selling her omega-3s and omega-6s, but they've also given her a fat blocker. I I'm sorry, why are we doing that? Because the omega-3s and the omega-6 supplements are coming in a fat base. They're fatty acids, and so if they're being blocked, I'm not quite sure what good. I mean, she's just wasting her money, and this is the part I'm getting at. It's irresponsible. I understand people wanting to make a, make money. I understand you deserve to make money, but we cannot be business building and just telling people you can make lots of money. You you can free up yourself. You know, it, we have to take responsibility. The, the bottom line, the biggest the greatest wealth we could ever have is going to be our health. And there are too many people on this planet fighting to restore some sense of wellness. And to be pushing these products is criminal. And again, I've seen other products with fat blockers, and it's just it's awful the things that I've seen about the plates of food that they take pictures of because they're going to eat that because they just took their carbon fat blocker. This stuff is crazy. We've got to stop. And at some point, somebody has to say something. And I thought, you know what? I'm just aggravated enough to, <laughs> to, to say something now. So, you know, I don't know how we're going to, how, 
I don't know how. The only thing I do know is that something has to be done. We either need to be training our people more mindfully. We need to stop just making it a generalized public process that everybody, anybody can sell this stuff to whomever just based on promotional material. Again, there is no company in the world that is going to tell you caffeine causes muscle spasms. They're not going to put that on the, on the, on the, um, promotional material. They're just going to tell you energy, sleep. They're going to give you all the stuff that people want to hear. They're not going to tell you all the other stuff. And I think it's, if we're not going to take responsibility with how we are actually selling this stuff, then the least we can do is tell them the, the, the chances of side effects, because there are chemicals in these, in these products. I don't care who you are, what you want to tell me. You're using a delivery mechanism Nanotechnology, I get it that, you you know, there's there's different forms of nanotechnology. I've looked into it. But the fact is, is that these things are being produced in labs, which means there's no longer a synergistic effect. And you, you know, you can say whatever you want about my feelings about synergy, but the truth is I've seen it time and time again. The benefits when we actually mindfully incorporate food-based nutrition with essential oils and even if there are medications involved, this can all be done. I have another new client. It was, she's got a really sad story. But yet within one week, we've seen a complete about face. This particular woman that, you know, I just took off of all of these supplements. I told her, I said, if you really want good nutrition and you're looking for more energy and you're looking to regulate your sleep, we can do this with food base. I did a video on, on, a, on a gelatinized maca root. If we just incorporated maca root, that would be worlds ahead of what she's currently taking and far less expensive, far less expensive. You know, we don't need caffeine to boost energy. We don't need caffeine to help lose weight. You know how we lose fat by consuming fat because it takes the lipids to release, to release lipids. So this is, I mean, fat tissue is part of the hormonal system. Again, and you need to be able to process fat in order to help the fat cells release the fats, you know, for energy. Again, that's another form of energy. Fat <laughs> is a form of energy. So think about that. If all you did was take the maca root, and I'll put the link down below to what I'm talking about. If you just took the maca root and increased your energy levels that way, and you and ate and included good fats, not in supplement form, but just in your day, like uh, avocados and nuts, then you're, well, again, worlds ahead because you're consuming good fats. Hemp hearts are another one. Hemp hearts are great. That link's in the description box below too because that's a perfect ratio of omega-3s and omega-6s. And even if you just did a tablespoon of that a day, if you're, if you're counting calories, hey, Theo, if you're counting calories, it's only 60 calories. For a tablespoon but I don't think you need to be worrying about calories truthfully you need to be getting the good fats into your system you need to be helping your digestive system and in the meantime boosting your energy and that's what's going to happen that's actually how you're going to do it yes we use carbs for energy but the fat also I'm sorry the body also burns fat as a form of energy that's what fat tissue is for but again that's a hormonal thing the maca root actually helps to stabilize the, and, and this is not the only answer, okay? I want to say that much. The oils are necessary. They're necessary. And that's where I work with people. I, I make bio-individualized um, blends because the blends actually help with, number one, symptom relief, and number two, with nutrient assimilation. It's a cleaner, more cost-effective way. And again, you can stabilize that hormonal system in which case the, the fat tissue, the adipose tissue, now functions in a more appropriate way. And you don't need to spend $1,500, even a couple of hundred dollars a month. That's ridiculous. On an ongoing basis, I don't know what people are doing. I mean, I get, you know, exercise is important. You know, stress relief is important. But your nutrition and how you're sourcing your body it's absolutely necessary. And that is, I've talked about it before. That's just way too much information, number one. And number two, there's too many conflicts. And here's the other thing. I mentioned earlier that pharmaceutical, I mean, nutraceutical companies were very much like pharmaceutical companies. Okay. And a lot of them are being run by scientists who actually have worked in the field of pharmaceutical, uh, pharmacology. So there's a history. And as I mentioned earlier, also pharmaceuticals are designed um, based on the way nature works. 
And the chemicals work together, they regulate function, and they, in, in, if you're talking about the human body, they um, have influences on various genetic receptors depending on what you're doing. Now, if you're working with an oil, you've got, it's even hard to calculate what else is being influenced. But the bottom line is they actually work on the genetic receptors. And that's why it's important to know what, what you're using because you need to understand how they are affecting the brain chemistry and the hormonal levels. Number two, they actually have an influence on the liver enzymes. And what that means is when the medication is being processed in the body, it will either slow down the breakdown and elimination of the drug, or it will increase the breakdown and elimination. It, it actually regulates the way the body, the, the length of time that it's in the body. And that's significant because the same thing is happening with plants and oils, essential oils actually have various constituents that can do the same thing. And plants in general. And the one that I have that comes to mind, and I this is the, the retraction. Uh, if you've seen it, if you've actually heard me say this before, then please forgive me. But this is something that I've come to learn over the last year. And I just haven't said anything until this point because it just hasn't come up until now. And that's quercetin. We know quercetin to be a significant bioflavonoid. I've talked about it before with its assistance on the um, digestive system. But the fact is, quercetin, like CBD, has the ability to influence various liver enzymes. And in fact, it's actually not recommended that quercetin be taken alongside a number of medications. Um, there's too many of them to actually list. So just know that quercetin is not recommended with many medications. That said, it's be it is because there's a conflict because these medications do the same thing that the quercetin does and and on the liver. So you got to avoid the quercetin. Well, interestingly enough, these particular products that I was researching actually have quercetin. One of them I know for a fact has quercetin in it. But it, I think it was also the same product that had all of these other stimulants in them too. And so it's the quercetin is actually slowing down the breakdown of that particular chemical or these chemicals and the elimination, for what reason? Because it increases the level of energy, that, that sense of energy. So they're trying to manipulate the way these nutraceuticals are affecting our bodies. And some of you may go, that's great. I don't have a problem with that. And other people I hope would say, you know, I'm hoping that I'm not the only one that is just like, I don't need all of this. You know, we have the ability to take care of ourselves with a little bit. And when I, it, I think it's criminal, like I said earlier. And so nutraceuticals are no different than pharmaceuticals. And the nutraceuticals, by nutraceuticals, I mean anything that's being sold as a supplement by any down, you know, um, direct marketing company. And for that matter, even on the shelves, or if you go to a, a clinician's office and they're selling you prepackaged, you know, pre-made supplements, be careful. And keep in mind that there's things in that that aren't necessarily on the label, as I talked about in my other video on male enhancement. So be careful. Be curious. You know, read your labels and, and look into some of these ingredients and understand that just because we know them to have a certain effect on the body does not mean it's going to be good for your body. Because you may be going through something health-wise that just because there's anti-inflammatory you know, anti benefits and there's antioxidants and so forth, that doesn't mean that it's going to benefit you. It just doesn't mean that. So please use caution. And if you do work with these companies, please find out more about the products you're selling. And please understand how they, they just don't go for everybody. It's not, it's not a recommended thing for everyone. If you have any questions, by all means, let me know, Tammy at Synergessence.com. I have relaunched my Patreon page because I'm very interested in teaching people how to use oils um, you know, for themselves and how to actually not just understand the oils, which I want to explain further, but how to integrate all of this and really develop an alchemy of wellness for themselves. So Tammy at Synergessence.com. My website is Synergessence.com. I'm on Twitter and Instagram um, at Tammy Davis 8 
and um, would love to connect with you somewhere. Share, subscribe, comment, and thanks for watching again. I'll talk with you later.